we got ourselves another Andy News video about solo leveling cut content from last week's episode. Let's get it. Sungjin's very existence is one that could topple the dynamic of guilds as we know it. Right now, there's a delicate balance between the top hunters, fame, white tiger, country, fiend. With each constantly vying for that number one spot, Knights. all it takes is another A or S. I love it when they use Chahe in footage here. It's great. There, there, there's no reason to, you know, what, what is he saying really here? What is he but saying? With each constantly vying for that number one spot, all it takes is another A or S rank to completely change that. I guess he did say S rank, right? He, he said S rank, Chahe is S rank. So I guess the footage does make sense, but you know. This is what An is hoping for with Sung Jin Woo, and it's his power that he believes will bring success to the White Tiger Guild. It's the core focus A and of S. the episode and the novel, Ass. but there was quite You're a bit right. more to On and his struggles in the novel. Things like why Sung is the most important hunter to appear in years, and how it is his recruitment would change pretty much everything for him. Okay. So, as we take a look at what was left out from the anime, it's that in Sung's new levels which you're going to want to stick around for. Before that, though, Ray Shadow I just Legends. want to remind you guys to check out the level up collections. Check out his merch, guys! Go, go, go! go play your and anyway, spend your money. Episode 10. What is this? A picnic? Covering chapters 35 to 37 from the manhwa and chapters 35 to 45 from the web novel. The manhwa this time didn't really have anything to <laughs> New Battle Pass it, armor. It was in the novel that a lot was cut from On and his mission to recruit Sung. Pretty much five chapters delving into the guild life and what it's like to be working as the chief recruiter for one. Okay. Before we get to that though, the first scene was of course that conversation between <sighs> Sung and Sung. An initially silent stroll due to an increasingly awkward dynamic between them, but one that had to be had since this would be the last time the two would see each other for a while. For a while. Or I wonder if she returns later in the story, but like what kind of value would she have? She's not gonna be a hunter anymore. She just retires. So what, just like emotional support? Cheerleader? Like what is she gonna do? Before Juhi would have had no problem talking to Sung like this, but ever since he got stronger and his presence more intimidating. Things were at the point where she didn't even know how to start a conversation with him anymore. <laughs> it was a massive change she promised she wouldn't ask him about, but one that was definitely bothering her for reasons she didn't even know herself. Sung Jin Moo looked Max too hard. Bro was mugging her so much that she didn't even know how to approach anymore. Bro, she's like, <laughs> Juhi's like, shit, I don't fucking know, bro. Maybe I gotta fucking retire and go mew myself. More than anything, she wanted to ask if she could see him again, but even that was too much as she felt words like that would just alienate him. Next time you see him, he might be with another girl out in public. Cha in maybe, maybe. So, with her only regret being that she wouldn't be able to see Sung as often, Juhi would declare her retirement and leave things at that. Rip. A somber end to a relationship I wish so she sad, man. to see more of. It was once Sung had gotten home from that, that a package would be waiting for him from the association. It was a replacement phone for the one he'd lost during the double dungeon incident. Oh yeah! This isn't really all that important, but it does tie up a loose end in the form of her. The Telephone. Loose end. Wait, because she gave us the number. Thirsty nurse who had asked for Thirsty nurse. number a yeah. few episodes back. Yeah. It turns out she'd been texting him quite a lot, and while it was- we didn't have a phone. Wait, 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 do we have a phone back then? She's in texting, okay. Wasn't at the point where her messages were particularly annoying. Sung felt that if he did reply, they would probably get to that. So okay. out of a precautionary measure to avoid someone who was potentially clingy, Sung would ignore the nurse's texts and leave her on red. <laughs> now, the following day, Sung would- <laughs> Thirsty nurse. Her entire role was just like witnessing Sung Jin Woo's transformation, like right, because in the hospital he woke up and he just looks so different, right? The nurse is like one of the first people to see like the changes, right? Well, not really the changes. She never really knew what he looked like before, but it's like her witnessing someone really hot, right? And it's for the audience to be like, oh shit, Riz, yo, the nurse is so thirsty. And then she just got left on red. The author did the nurse even dirtier than Juhi. Start his 19 raids with Jinho, and when he heard Jinho would be picking him up and driving him there, what he expected was a fancy car only someone like Damn. him could afford. Bugatti. When he pulled up in an old utility van not aligned with his wealth, that's when Sung realized Jinho was a lot more diligent than he initially gave him credit for. 
Reason being that a van like this was a lot more inconspicuous than whatever luxury sports car he usually drove. I agree. Compared to like a Lambo, a Bugatti, right? Uh, this white van is a lot less uh, sus. But at the same time, a white van has some connotations with some creepy motherfuckers. Like free candy on the side, right? So like maybe you could have picked a little bit less shady of a van, but it's better. So, if their goal was to do these gates in the most discreet way possible, then this van was a huge step towards maintaining that. <laughs> so see. It was a brand new purchase he had made specifically for this. Fast forward to when we meet the hunters forming their party, and while they had no problem sitting outside for a sum of what was essentially $2,000, they did feel Every day, they got $2,000 USD a pop to sit outside and do fucking nothing, play some card games, wait for Jinho. And Song Jin moved to finish the race. That's fucking crazy. Two individually, everyone got 2k. Bad knowing they may have just assisted in someone else's suicide. No one wanted to know a fellow hunter was gonna die in the gate in front of them, but that was the situation they were facing when they searched up who Sung and Jin Ho were. Everyone they got also 2k, felt right? A bit of regret knowing they wouldn't be paid for the other three gates per day. Promise. But yet, yeah, Jesus fucking Christ, 2k per fucking gate. Yes, yes, three six gate. Motherfucker, you, you and I, we're not even arguing. We're not even fucking arguing. We know it's 2K. And then people, 6K! It's like, what? What about 6K? 2K per gate! We saw their reaction when Sung and Jin Ho proved otherwise, so the rest of day one continued with zero hassle whatsoever. It was by the end that Sung had gained two new skills and his dash critical up attack, making its enhancement 10% more effective. Wow, As for 10%. As two new skills did, advanced dagger technique made him stronger when fighting with a dagger. It's just like past weapon mastery, right? You're just stronger with dagger, 33% more damage. It was ever-increasing proficiency okay. with it, and as such provided 33% increased damage whenever he was cool. using one. This also came with the brand new active skill critical attack, and this simply made it easier for Sung to target his opponent's vitals. Critical attack? It's an active skill, though. So you just auto-crit? Made it easier. Let's see this. Your attacks have become more efficient. You are now able to find your opponent's vital points and inflict critical damage. Kind of crazy to just like, I don't know. It, when, you, when you play games, CV, crit value. If you play Honkai Star or Genshin Impact or any other game that has like, you know, substat rolling and crit stuff like that, right? To be able to just automatically crit, right? By using this skill, that means you could like just ignore the crit rate and just go all crit damage and attack percent, right? You know, stuff like that, but it's kind of crazy, kind of crazy. Easier for Sung to target his opponent's vitals. It provided the most optimum way to attack with his daggers, and as such would guide him to the weak spot cool. most lethal to them. After which additional damage would be applied if the weak spot was hit. That may sound standard given our own perception of... Uh, <laughs> League of Legends! For, for Sung, this was a lot bigger than any of us may have considered. What I mean is that for him who'd just been mindlessly slashing in hopes of landing a hit, a clear path to maximum damage was literally game changing. True. Before he'd only ever achieved it a couple of times, but it's when he did that he knew the fight was over. Like with Kang in this dungeon or the monsters here, Sung knew the moment his dagger made impact the fight was finished. There was this satisfying feeling which made him certain of it. So to be The way he just like casually dropped a knife in in, in, in Kang Teshik here, that was so cool, man. The domain expansion into the just like a little swift little whoosh. So smooth. So, to be able to achieve that feeling with every attack, well, that was kind of like finding water in the desert. It had turned Sung into a monster killing machine, a buff to his efficiency that made leveling up significantly faster. Okay. Day two was where all that became evident since every monster was effectively being one shot now. Sung would activate his critical attack skill, then his next attack would obliterate whatever enemy. <laughs> he looks so target. bored. Unfortunately, that came with the expense of depleting his mana, but luckily he could just refill it with shop mana, mana potions. potions. An okay. infinite supply that essentially funded itself. Hmm. So as long as we have enough mana potions, do we really need to go into instant? Because like raising int, what does that really do? Increase mana, but at the same time, maybe just like int requirements for some spells, right? You need to have like 100 int to use this OP spell. So maybe there is value in putting into int and not relying just on mana potion. Naturally, this made Jinho curious, so out of all the things that he could have asked a question about, it was this strange blue liquid that made him finally say something. You want some? This led Sung to test what he could and couldn't you do want some? Him, and that in turn led to a discovery towards even faster dungeon clearing. Huh? So, first Sung wanted to know what cannot be traded meant, and that simply indicated- Cannot be traded, as in like, you can't buy shit with gold that you earned in the instance dungeon. Buy stuff from that instant dungeon shop, 
then trade it outside, right? Because then that would, it's just, you know, it's, it's untradeable, right? It's different, right? He did that the item would disappear if placed into someone else's hands. Okay. It would remain so long as it was in his own possession, but the moment it left, the item would vanish. That's hmm. not to say it couldn't be used on others, though, since when testing it... Yeah, 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 we used a potion on this guy, right? just pour the potion into Jinho's mouth himself. Okay. He found the potion remained and even applied its effects to the person ingesting it. It was a revelation that would save the two of them hours. Before, Jinho had been working beyond the point of exhaustion, but now that potions removed that fatigue completely, he found he didn't even have to stop to eat anymore. The two could work non-stop without feeling even a bit of Pretty practice, efficient. Thus allowing him to keep up with- Man, having like a fatigue, like a, that kind of potion to remove fatigue in the real world would be fucking crazy, man. Like, damn. Could you imagine a potion like that where it's just like, you just drink it, you, don't, you just feel full, you, you don't feel tired anymore. It's like, you automatically feel like you had like eight hours of sleep, you feel fucking good. That would be crazy, bro. Yo, actually, I don't know. That that could lead into a very dystopian world where, you know, exactly. Map and you know, like, basically just forcing humans to work even more. Nah, maybe maybe, maybe we should not invent that. Maybe maybe we should not invent uh, openly Pandora's box. The rapid rate Sung was killing monsters at. This wasn't something Sung had done out of kindness for Jinho, though, but was rather a necessary cost in which the return was calculated to provide more value. If it didn't, then there was no way Sung would have used his potions on Jinho like this. It was solely because the productivity was worth more than the value of the potion that Sung could afford to give them away like this. Okay. Of course, to Jinho, this was yet another gesture befitting the benevolent Sung Jinu, so to him it carried quite a bit of meaning. Oh, so much so that it would actually bring a tear to his eyes. He cried this over the potions? Day three of raiding, and after seven raids, the two had accumulated over 600 million won together. Damn. Granted, Jin Half a mil almost. A billion for them, but the returns from each were going straight to Sung. Never once did Jinho think the two of them would split the money, since to him, every bit of it was earned by Sung alone. Plus, Jinho probably doesn't even need the money because he's already just a, just a rich trust fund kid, right? It was a display of respect that reflected Jinho's ever-changing demeanor towards him. Now, it was around the same time that Jinho was buying all these gates that the White Tiger Guild would be going through a crisis because of it. Huh? You see, with no C-rank gates available to purchase, we the guild's it all. rookies could no longer be developed since that's what they used to train them. It was a phenomenon ah. the guild had never been exposed to since. And that's when An was like, something's going on here. And then he starts to do a digging and the homework, right? The men responsible for securing them were extremely competent. As the chief and deputy of the White Tiger's second management division, it was only natural they'd be incredibly skilled at what they do. I mean, they did have... <laughs> skilled at what they do. What, what did they really do last episode? The guy on the right was basically outside of the cafe penne. You remember cafe cock? And, and, and the random lady with the fattest ass just like in a miniskirt walked by. And he was like, <laughs> and then he smiled and laughed. And, and then the guy on the left, he just got scammed. He tried to scam us. Then we scammed the scammer, right? He, I mean, I guess, I guess they are good at their job. They, they, they did their homework, but you know, it's like the outcome was. <laughs> Division. It was only natural they'd be incredibly skilled at what they do. Okay. I mean, they did after all represent one of the top five guilds in South Korea. White Tiger, that's right. So, as the two in charge of the division responsible for recruiting new hunters and training them, the fact they had nothing to train their rookies with was an exceptional blunder the guildmaster was sure to scold them for. It was a crisis that required fixing immediately. As for how it even happened, well, let's just say Jinho flexed a bit too hard on them. Oh? I know in the anime they said he had bid 150 million, but How in much? the novel and manhwa, it was actually 250 million. Add 100 he more. He bid 25% more than the max return one could possibly expect from a C rank gate. Initially, his bid was only 70 million, but when the White Tiger Guild countered with their max bid of 100 million, this auction. Jinho just said screw it and edged out everyone with 250 million. 250! Who's gonna match me? Some one could only think that a crazy person would pay for. Their first thought was that it was another guild trying to hinder their development, but when Man, they considered the more I realized like how important Jinho is, right? Him having these resources. Like Sung Jin Mu is the main character, but without Jinho's resources, like a lot of this shit is just impossible. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people don't really recognize how valuable Jinho's trust fund, you know, daddy's credit card really is. With the all-out war such a move would trigger. There was no way anyone else was stupid enough to try and do that, especially not to a guild as strong as the White Tiger Guild. 
That's when An's assistant would mention it was Sung and Jinho, and this would lead to the realization that Sung had reawakened. The anime skipped a few dots while An was reawakened, them, but the gist was a combination of factors which made it so incredibly obvious. The first was the three incidents which Sung miraculously survived. The second, the fact Jinho's father was actively recruiting S rank hunters. <laughs> the the speed in which the two of them were clearing out gates now. Even if he set aside the sheer impossibility of Kang losing to a one-armed mage type hunter, those other two clues were more than enough to indicate Sung was something special. It is getting pretty sus now. The picture that Jinho's father was testing him, an assumption that made An think he still had time to recruit Sung himself. By knowing just how particular Jinho's father was when it came to his public image. Oh damn! Yo, Jinho, Daddy Jinho looks kind of cool in the webtoon, right? In the anime, did he? I don't know. The webtoon one, right over here, he he looks pretty imposing, right? In in the car. Oh. The picture that Jinho's father was testing. He's not completely full in the car. I don't know. His face looks like shriveled up. But An the webtoon version was On like. Think he still had time damn. to recruit Sung himself. By knowing just how particular Jinho's father was when it came to his public image, there was no doubt in An's mind that that's exactly what was happening here. He felt he had just come across the ultimate discovery, the perfect opportunity in which a reawakened hunter was. Pr <laughs> this is Jinmu before he transforms. Prime for poaching. Even if Sung didn't rank high on the retest, just his advertising power alone would provide value which couldn't be bought with money. Such was the influence of those who reawakened like this. So, for now- Influencer marketing. Now On knew he still had time since Sung's retest hadn't yet happened, but the moment it did was when the competition would become intense. Okay. That's the reason he wanted to get ahead now. In fact, it was so important that he felt the need to go out into the field himself. Man, I can't wait for like other people other than like Mr. On here to realize Sung Jimu's value and for like pretty much just like have fucking like paparazzi around them, you know? Like I want him to get to that like celeb status where everyone's like, oh shit, it's Sung Jin Woo. And as soon as he like walks out on the street, remember that anime we watched? What was that? Um, I got a cheat skill in another world. Like as soon as he steps outside because he's like so hot, like everyone just like snaps their fucking neck. It's like, oh my God, please sign my autograph. Please give me your autograph, right? Something he hadn't done in the two years. Maybe like season two content. It was this type of initiative which landed on the position he was in, and that was all thanks to his incredible instincts. If not for them, then not only would An not have become the youngest division head in the entire Damn. organized- Damn, youngest division head. You know, Annie News is glazing the shit out of Mr. An, and honestly, it's pretty cool to see that other characters like him that didn't really seem that important in the anime. That's a lot more lore behind the scenes. Station, but the White Tiger Guild as a whole wouldn't be the top 5 guild it is today. There was something special about the way he was able to read hunters, and that same sense was now telling him that Sung was particularly special. Maybe An is better than Manager Wu. Remember Manager Wu from the Hunters Association? I mean, in the beginning his read was a little bit off, but right now... Well then again, An does have more data points now compared to Manager Wu. Manager Wu only had like the double dungeon before. Then there was the Huang Dong Su incident. An had like three incidents typed on. Uh, tacked on together. I don't know. I don't know. He was the first recruit in a while to make his heart race. This <laughs> made getting some. Yeah, we're, ma we're, we're making we're making Mr. On's heart go doki doki. Their top priority, and okay. it would lead him and his deputy to stake out the two gates Song was supposed to be at today. Okay. They'd each gone to one individually, and their plan was to call the other as soon as Sung was spotted. Eventually, Sung would appear at the gate the deputy was at, and what the deputy would describe would serve as confirmation for everything An had theorized. You see, by People seeing just playing Sung cards outside? go into the gate alone, An had no reason to doubt anymore that this was in fact Jinho testing him. It was the only logical explanation for why the two of them would even try a gate by themselves. This gave On the confidence that he could poach Sung, because while he assumed Jinho to be nope. wasting time verifying Sung's abilities, on, on the other hand, believed he could just swoop in and make an offer. Nope. An offer he felt some. Well, he could. He could. If he could, you know, afford it. But it's like, what was it? Wasn't the offer almost like more than the entire valuation of the White Tiger Guild? Certain to accept, and one he believed was a surefire victory for him. This, of course, wasn't how any of that turned out. But before we can even get to that meeting in the cafe, On would first tell his deputy to keep watching some. He wanted to see how long the gate would take to complete since the clearing time was a good indication of what Sung's rank would be. 
an A rank took somewhere around two hours to do one solo, okay. so if Sung was above or below that, On could just adjust his estimations accordingly. How fast to be clear? His assistant called back saying Sung had finished it in 30 minutes, though. If it takes an A rank hunter to clear it in two hours, Sung Jun Mu soloed in 30 minutes. He did it four times as fast. Meaning, <laughs> he's not four times stronger than an A rank hunter. How strong is he right now? I honestly don't know. He keeps leveling up. Right, right now, last episode, like uh, Kang, Kang, before Kang Teshik, it was like CB. Be beating Kang Teshik, it was like above B. B, B, A. I don't know. And, and now it's just like, hmm, A? A? Mid A? Mid high A? High low A? <laughs> high high low low mid A? That's when An knew he was dealing with the unimaginable. He couldn't even fathom how strong someone would have to be to achieve that. Okay. What he initially thought was impossible was just proven otherwise in a way that completely shattered all his expectations. So now more than ever, An knew Sung needed to be recruited by him. As for how you Sung can't was buy him. To pull this off, it just so happened the monsters he was facing were of the werewolf variety. Our title, increased percentage boost damage. The kind in which his title allowed him to yeah. get 80% increased damage to them. Broken. It was this combined with all his other- <laughs> He looks so bored and I love this webtoon frame. He just looks so fucking bored and nonchalant right now. Killing all these beasts. The skills that allowed him to breeze through the entire dungeon faster than- He's actually breezing. Keep up. In fact, even if Jinho had 10 more hands, that still wouldn't have been enough to pick up all the essence cores fast. Bro, we need like straight up- we, we should have recruited more people to like um- well, actually, I wonder how that would work, because like right now, the bottleneck, the limited resource is like people being able to farm, you know, these mats, because Jinmu is like going too fast, and Jinho, you know, we need like 10 more fucking arms to do it. Enough. Sung had actually had to give him five healing potions just so he could keep on going. <laughs> that was the last raid of day three. And <laughs> All the potions are being used on the fucking non-combatant who's just farming mats. With time to spare on his daily schedule, Sung would ask Jinho to drive him to the mall. There was an instant dungeon that he had just unlocked. Oh, instance dungeon? This would grant him two more levels, then it was after that that he would receive a call from On. A voice that introduced themselves as part of the White Tiger Guild, and one that insisted they needed to meet in person. Sung suggested that they could meet in a couple of days, but when the voice insisted that they needed to meet now, Sung became a little bit wary. Especially since they mentioned that they were nearby, which was hmm. indication that they knew where he lived. Kind of threatening. information publicly available, so the fact they had it meant that they had done a thorough investigation of him. It was a worrying concern that made it clear he wasn't being as discreet as he thought he was. Enough to accept the request and meet them immediately. Honestly, now that all these different information, it almost sounds like he's stalking us, right? Pretty much. I mean, he's trying to do his due diligence and do his homework so that he can be as much as prepared as he can. But it sounds kind of creepy. And honestly, I don't feel bad for Sung Jin Moo just like intimidating the shit out of him. Even like grazing him, right? Saying like... <laughs> he was so imposing when he disappeared. He went into stealth and like... Based no, no, no. He like walked behind him and he says, don't turn around, right? Yeah, that part. That was that, that part was like, Jesus, do we have to do that? But it's like, yeah, honestly? Yeah, fuck it. This would lead to the meeting in the cafe, but in addition to all the stuff we saw in the anime, there was quite a bit of extra information regarding the White Tiger Guild and the actual offer they were making. Okay. So, out of the top five guilds in South Korea, the one that sits in first is the The Hunters Association. Hey, he already fucking The Hunters Association. The Hunters Guild. Uh, Guildmaster Che. Hunters Guild. And then White Tiger, probably? Before that, it used to be the Reapers Guild, but oh. after a few members left Reapers. and started their own. Oh, the Reapers, the, the top dogs of Reapers left and made their own guild. The Reapers would fall in ranking and make way for the Hunters to take its place. Okay, oh, oh, oh wait, 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 where did they go? Where, where did they go? Reapers, they started their own, the they started their own guild. Fall in ranking and make way for the Hunters to take its place. Okay. It was those who had left that had started the White Tiger Guild. Okay, it is the White Tiger. Of years that guild so it's basically like Madhouse that turned into Mappa. Because, like, all the top dogs left, but then pretty much Mappa just turned into Madhouse. Anyways. But ...surpass even the Reapers. They had become far stronger than the guild they were once part of, and were now gunning for the spot that the Hunter's Guild currently held. Such a position was one that was always unobtainable, but if Sung Jin was the person An thought him to be, then he was the piece they needed to finally take that number one spot. Thus reinforcing the... Nah, I don't want Jin to join any guild, right? Nah, nah, fuck those guilds. Like, we have... I mean, Jin Ho has his own guild. I like the idea of being a solo guild. I, I like the idea of just like, like a, 
one person. Like, we don't need, like, an entire fucking guilds, divisions, and different people in there. Fuck it. Sung Jin Mu just, like, be so strong that he's, like, a one-man army by himself type. You know what I mean? It is solo leveling, you know? I, and, and even in, like, Sword Art Online that we're watching right now, I, I, I love the premise of, like, Kirito being, like, a solo player, right? We don't need to rely on any guild. It's basically, just, like, a contractor. He just goes in. He's solo, right? So I, I do like this idea that Sung Jin Mu will be just, like, independent, doesn't need other people, and it's pretty much just, like, a one-man army by himself. Himself because that's how strong he is through the leveling system. The reason why An wanted to recruit him so bad. Now, normally any hunter would be awestruck when face to face with a top five recruiter, but in classic Sung fashion, he wasn't impressed. At all. <laughs> Who? White fact, Tiger? Who? What An believed was a target of great desire for pretty much every hunter was to Sung nothing more than a casual business meeting. An had hoped he could use. Yeah, this is like. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, this is like a dream come true for every hunter, right? It's like, oh my god, the white tigers have approached me. Everyone would just fold immediately on whatever was negotiated. But Sung Jin Mu is like, this is just annoying. What are you doing here, bro? Such desire to his advantage, but when he saw Sung couldn't even care less, he was a bit disappointed since he knew things weren't going to be easy for him. The only thing on Money. for him was the fact Sung was yet to sign with Jin Ho, but that too was a misconception based on the assumption that they were testing him still. It was the one fatal flaw when coming to the table since the entire time he believed the opposition was underestimating Sung's true value. When he realized that that wasn't the case, once again An was faced with the unimaginable. Oh? As for Sung, the offer to join the White Tiger Guild honestly wasn't a bad one. The only reason why he didn't was because there was literally zero need to do so. Since his value only increases every time he levels, there was no reason to think that Sung couldn't just solo a B or A rank dungeon. Exactly! The very Fuck gates em. which funded guilds into what they are today could potentially be sold by him and the profits completely monopolized by Exactly! Him. The whole point is just solo. I don't want to give my EXP away to other people. We're strong enough to just take everything for ourselves, right? So, so long as he kept leveling up, that dream scenario definitely wasn't an impossible one. It was a thought that reaffirmed joining a guild simply wasn't necessary. Yeah, make your Perhaps own guild. Well, Jinho. Him otherwise, but unless An had the ability to make such a decision. That isn't, that isn't just like a mind-boggling amount of money. 37.5 million USD is being offered on the table. Like, that's just like a, cre like a stupid amount of money. Nothing he could offer right now would change that. Now. When Sung did ask how much the White Tigers guild- And this is pretty much just like a sign-on bonus. Who knows how much more he'd be paid after for each like, gate clear, right? ...building was worth. An had actually believed this to be an opportunity to flex a bit. He thought Sung was- <laughs> You ain't flexing. ...the guild's financial power and believed this would be a good way to show off just how much of it they had. Okay, go ahead. An thought to be an advantage to him though was actually just Sung probing how much they could pay for him. A shocking revelation that once again shattered An's expectations of him. This would be where their conversation ends, and it's oh, after this, this is the, best part. the story would go on to do a few things differently. The gates wouldn't be bought until the day after this one, simply because Bake hadn't given permission to spend as much money as they needed to on- This is the difference in the anime of how he got scammed, right? He was in a fit of rage scolding On for not having done his job properly. Okay, he was this mad at On. This recruit training was essential, and if a guild couldn't even afford to train their own recruits, then that was a weakness the other guilds were sure to take advantage of. Even if they purchased gates outside of their own territory, to do so would hurt their image in a way that might be unrecoverable. It would be like announcing to the world that they didn't have the power to train in their own territory. A disgraceful message that might not sit well with future recruits. Didn't even know that like territory disputes like this was so important. I guess at the end of the day, it is about public image, right? How people perceive the White Tiger Guild. If they were to suddenly buy other gates outside of the territory, then it's like, oh, what happened to your own gates? You got outbid? You must be poor, you broke motherfuckers. Ain't nobody joined the White Tigers now. Fortunately, Sung's job change quest meant he needed to sell them. So that was a lucky turn of events providing a solution to this problem. Now. In between all this, there was Sung accepting Jin Ha's request to go to her parent-teacher meeting, a homemade vegetable juice given to Sung by An's deputy, then what? a little tease of a cereal. Homemade vegetable juice given by An Dep deputy An like An's deputy. What? We got we, we got a homemade what? Jin Jin Ha uh, parent-teacher meeting. Oh, Jin Ha parent-teacher meeting. So Sung Jin Mook would show up. I, I don't know if that would be like random slice of vibe moments. Okay, that'd be kind of fun, I guess. A homemade vegetable juice given to Sung by An's deputy, then... Okay, homemade vegetable juice? Random as fuck? A little tease of a serial killer that's prowling around his neighborhood. Brother! 
All this happened on the morning before his raids on day 4, and they're the small events that developed the world around Sung. Okay. But yeah, that's pretty much everything we missed from episode 10. Alright. If you liked what you saw and want to see more, then be sure Y'all know what to like do. The video. Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Annie News a subscription. Like his videos if you did. He always gives us such great content. And yes, Solo Leveling Reaction will be out pretty soon. We're going to watch it very soon. Live on Twitch. Twitch.tv.com. Slash kaka TV, you know where to find me. Bye bye.